Hi folks, welcome back to the Battle for the Seven Kingdoms. We have a couple more games to show you. So this is the final round. And uh, it's uh, the Proudwing Kings against uh, Goldbull, a Lannister team. And the Proudwing Kings have won the first game. Uh, that was uh, James Wormsley playing, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. So it's 1-0. Uh, and we actually have a chance to win this final and win the tournament here against this uh, alliance deck that is actually quite interesting it's uh, kind of a mix between lanny free companies and uh, just dark free companies i guess which are both uh, late game decks they start a little bit slower so that they can get all of their bestow tools like castery rock which of course is great with any bestow cards and econ like uh, the iron bank uh, but in the late game, suddenly, there is uh, an incredible amount of Econ, an incredible amount of draw, and uh, of course, uh, Targ brings in jumpers. So, uh, we're going to play Kohor against this, and Kohor has been doing well for us, but I think the general impression here was that uh, if uh, Lannister starts slowly and Kohor gets the tools, we can win quickly. But uh, the longer the game goes on, more tricky it becomes, I guess. Although there is one thing. Uh, both decks play the Mad King's Command, so... Uh, in this particular matchup, actually getting rid of those 18 locations that this deck plays and... Uh, um, yeah, limiting all of the stuff that can happen. Uh, with characters as well, there's some jumpers, as I said. Uh, is not so bad. Really, the plots that we were afraid of here is... Uh, Morgulis, as usual, because you need to protect against it, and the pointy end, which uh, hurts uh, Kohor whenever you try to build a Voltron character, uh, because all of the either all of the attachments get discarded, or you can get rid of uh, the duplicates, or sometimes even the power, which of course someone like uh, Fast Robert uh, can get it very quickly, and it was uh, Sarah's job to beat this deck. So what was the plan, Sarah? Uh, so basically, just not get a really bad Morgulis, I think. Uh, I tried a few games, and in testing, I think the ones that I lost was where there was some scenario where I couldn't find the bodyguards. Uh, like, for example, there was a pointy end into uh, Morgulis, and the, the round, uh, the pointy end round, was there was not enough attachments to to bring in and um i think i was trying to sort of try to if i don't have enough attachments in hand i have to cohort them around so they're not on the same character so you can keep them and then if you can get duplicates so you don't need to worry about bodyguard that's perfect and uh, there's some milk so i'm again kind of wanted wanting to get Stannis that can get that can't get blanked and uh what's other things that I have to look for oh, I think that's this is not the right deck sorry <laughs> I'm supposed to show the proud wing king's cohort ah, there we have <laughs> yeah and I think um the one thing that was problematic was the one event that can jump in uh, mercenaries that also works on Mad King's command, and it can also even work on um, on the uh, supporting the failed round if you have uh, gold roads. I think they have gold roads in this deck, and um, I think they also have the event that gives mercenaries no attachment trait. So I I'd try to not give the um, Hunting accident on a character that's just gonna get rid of it immediately. I think that's some of the things that you have to look out for in this deck. Tyrion that can drop them in, but you can always get um, one good round with Mad King's... Um, no, Mad King's command, uh, King in the North, uh, that can block everything. So if there's no event, and um, then, then that's a good round, usually. Yes, so... Uh... King in the north blocking the triggers and also the smith getting rid of some locations like flea bottom can help a little bit so those are 
usually good round supporting the fate okay um, situation but we found that uh, usually it was pretty trivial to to get the two gold if you needed to play the the jumper mercenary event for mm. um, the Lenny deck and yeah that's basically it air is there of course to find oops this is this one is a little bit more important than some of the other matchups uh, i was talking uh, in some of the previous rounds about uh, opponents having to play Morgulis that usually doesn't end well for them if they're forced into that but this deck has been a little more successful in testing uh, getting a good Morgulis and uh, having a chance from that but yeah it has that good setup with uh castle rock and um Stuff like that, and it can recover very well from their own Morguli. So even if they are in a situation where the whole board dies from them, uh, they can still recover. And um, Kohor really can't if the whole board is dead in Kohor. That's usually game over. Yes. So with all of that said, are you ready to see the game? Yeah, I just want to say, uh, I think we talked with... Um, Right way down, and he said that for them, the key card to get was Milk of the Puppy, actually, for Robert. And um, yeah, that's, uh, I guess, fair enough. Uh, it can slow you down a bit, and then um, and then they have a chance to reset and stuff. But I, I found that I can deal with Milk if I can get tennis, and tennis can be blanked. And, um, that was not that much of a problem for me. It was more finding the bodyguards. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So. <laughs> I to mention. Yeah, sure. Um, let's see how uh, it went. So, who got uh, the cards they needed? Uh, so, if you're ready, we can click play at the same time. I will do a quick countdown. So it's three, two, one, and play. So I honestly don't remember much of the game. <laughs> Just quite a bit back. Well, um, I remember uh, most of it. Uh, we are, mm -hmm. of course, watching this from my perspective, so now uh, seeing Sarah's hand, we have Lenny at the bottom uh, and Bretian on the top of the screen. So um, uh, I did not actually... so. Uh, you were not at the same place, right? Where you play this when you play this, so I don't know exactly what was in your hand. I couldn't see it, but you did um, mm. tell me some stuff. So hopefully, I can uh, remember a little bit. I know that I had Melisandre in the first round. Uh, at this point. I, we can also say, of course, that um, like uh, uh, Henry said when we did uh, the previous video in game one, that's the one really where they thought they had the best chance. So uh, they are on the back foot having lost that one because this matchup is supposed to favor us and definitely game three is also supposed to favor us. So they need to win both of these and uh, it's going to be tough. But you can see this video is pretty long, so they... Uh, have a certainly um, a good game here. Sorry about the, some of the slow loading images. That's uh, just my connection. And we have mm -hmm. Caster Lock. So starting, uh, like we said, starting slowly. So the the great card that uh, basically enables the entire deck is there, but no characters. So, uh, but okay, so opening with Light Summer Feast. So should be able to block some. Uh, early power gain and you start with with Alistair but no um, renown on him of course by default and honestly the two attachments so uh, there are three copies so uh, saving him not a terrible idea but he is really the, the one guy that you don't mind dying for Morgulis because he comes with the nil and with Warhammer he does not get intimidate he just gets the plus strength yeah, I just wanted to get um, some stuff to Mali, uh, to get new cards, and then also I think uh, the plan was I would want to go second because I had Melisandre, so I didn't want to marshal no attachments. Um, 
I think I could march another chat instead of the attachments, but then I give in extra gold to the opponent. I was thinking he might start with um might start with the um what's it called? <laughs> At the gate and then the gold is really weak. But yeah, he opened with Let's Alfie, so I guess the one gold wouldn't matter that much. And there we are, so the bestow engine started, uh, fever dreams can be refilled each round, each round basically, so whenever Alistair needs its draw and the Econ, uh, okay, isn't really there that much, but Caster Rock is also an Econ card if you want it to be, of course, we can't uh, forget that. Mm -hmm. So I went second to get the Melisandre and then him Barsha's begging brother. So, uh, I think I had to put milk on him first. Yeah, many characters that need to be milked, there are only two. So if uh, now someone like yeah, Tyrion comes in, it's going to be a problem. And like I said, I think uh, the problem with milking Tyrion is that he can get no attachments and then that's just an attachment that's wasted. So I am kind of okay with having milk on back in brother. Uh, and that's the event that I was kind of worried about. And it brings in Vargo as well, that's gonna get saved now by um by Golden Company. Is it Golden Company? Yeah. Um Yeah, just checking how it works here. So uh, at the end of the phase uh, Varko would get returned to hand, but Golden Company has an ability where you can discard gold to save a mercenary from uh, being returned to hand. And of course, Vargo can uh, just give uh, Golden Company the gold. Yeah, and there's even still the agenda trigger. So one shot dies, you get your late summer feast and that's all Rupert does here. Yeah, now I'm thinking if I go in for the military challenge first, I, I'm thinking he's going to kill uh, Bagging Brothers and get rid of Milk. And that's kind of, I'm always kind of looking at attachments not being wasted, so I'm trying to now maybe um, do an intrigue first and then go for military. Because now there's no really good claim soak, so if you kill Golden Companies, then Varu has to go to hand and Bagging Brothers stays here alone. Uh, so I'm thinking, okay, it has, he has to then kill Bagging Brothers anyway, after the milk is gone. Power seems... Uh... Unusual. It's the one that does Why? the least, probably. I mean, I just want to think of either intrigue or power, but. Um. I think my plan was to trade, I think, milk for. Uh, um, the attachment that gives renown if you have more power. Oh, the mysterious disputed attachment. Claim. Yeah, yeah, the disputed claim. So I had to do power if I want to actually get renown. And there we go. That means Bagging Brother is going to be problematic now, of course, that the milk is gone. It can cancel me I'm thinking it has to now go for claim, right? It could go for claim. Although, I guess, uh, Golden Company could also. Okay, you lose Vargo, but he, he does go back to hand. Mm. 
And this was a surprise. So claims Vargo here. There are three copies set yeah. in the deck, and he's quite important. Yeah, that was a surprise for me as well. Um, I, I think... I don't know if it was the right play or not, but uh, I don't think it caused him problems. He didn't get another Vargo anyway, but um, even if he goes back to hand, I think you can still replay him. Although the gold is a bit weak for the next round if you kill Golden Company. But now I'm thinking, okay, he killed Vargo instead. I was thinking surely Bag and Brother. And I'm thinking, okay, I might as well just give Milk back to Bag and Brother because then I get the Melisandre Nila. And if I have Robert, I can get the Robert's ability. There is still Alistair's ability that can happen. Yeah. But I don't think I have any of the big ones in hand right now. And I think right now I'm thinking to just play um, Heir to the Iron Throne, and he takes Wise Master for Hollow Hill, and that's a, a card that I don't see often, and it basically recycles the events, right? And um, I'm not super happy about that because this event is really annoying. It's the one that I can't really block, especially with Gold Road. Yeah, so uh, the attachment situation here, of course, there are two milks in the deck and uh, one was traded and then traded back. So this is the last mm -hmm. milk. If anything else comes in, it cannot get milked from this point. So Tyrion, for instance, or Darion Harris yeah. even. Yeah, but like I said, I think, I don't know, maybe it's just a bias that happened. Uh, but every time I try to put a negative attachment on Mercenary, it always got the event. I mean, there is 75 cards, so it's hard to find, but I don't know. And one Golden Company goes for reserve, so both players over reserve. And you have uh, no economy in this card, Sweet Robin, fair enough. And Seal of the Hand, the big attachment. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. I decided here that I'm just going to play air now and not wait to get Sweet Robin play because I really didn't want to wait too long. And if I play air, get rid of Alistair, I get the bodyguard from Alistair back. He has to replay his attachment with Bestow and um, yeah. And here is Tennis. So one bodyguard is in hand. What's the dupe situation? I guess we we'll see when we get to the marshalling phase. Well, that's the Melisandre Nil and also basically economy to replace yeah. actual economy. <laughs> yeah, but I can't now play um, both attachment. Um, Roller attachment and uh, the bodyguard as well, so have to trade anyway. Yeah, and this is now extremely important that you can uh, that you uh, do a successful challenge here. But uh, this deck is not uh, super crazy with um, tricks that would block you. If you have pure strength, you should be able to push something through, and doesn't have the denial that uh, Stark did in the previous round. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is if he gets Tyrion, it's gonna get another uh, Golden Company from this card pile, and I don't know, I think right now it should be okay with three pretty big characters. I mean, uh, Silis is not big, but Mirsandr is pretty big with the, the Disputed Claim, and Tennis is very helpful when you want to win a challenge. Okay, so Braun actually has um, mainly in this deck, I guess, he has the high strength potential with the bestow. Not that many. It's not like it's a it's a regular Lannister deck that has all the lords and ladies. I think there is Davin and maybe one or two others. Not sure that he can theoretically save. Yeah, he can't even save Tyrion because I don't think the. Targaryen Tyrion is actually Lord. 
and here's the wise master so he can always grab that event back for another search mm -hmm. now it's not guaranteed to hit but with so many mercenaries it should get something if it gets uh, Dario on a Harris, of course, he can also stand other characters, which is uh, annoying potentially. Yeah, and also I think right now if he gets Dario, um, a problematic is that I only have this Dragonstone um, faithful for claim, and uh, Dario can actually take him, and then um, you don't have claim so. Fever Dreams is back. So nothing bestowed on Wise Master and so far nothing on Fever Dreams. There is Castle Rock that can uh, be used on three cards. However, there is also uh, some potential to leave it standing sometimes. Uh, there will be a supporting the fate round and uh, while mm -hmm. it's standing you can spend gold from Lannister cards. And so you basically only need one because Gold Road can get, give you the other one for the two cost event. So this can be um, supporting of is doesn't do its job basically is is what uh, I'm saying here because that, uh, there's the one two cost event and Lannister can find a, a way around the plot. So old build bone doesn't really do anything. I didn't bother getting him in through shadows because needing the faction card yeah. does nothing. And here we go. So uh, no warhammer either at the moment in play. Yeah, I had to trade. And uh, we have Brand the Builder revealed for Rupert here, so he surely is not going to uh, just defend uh, like crazy, because then he would basically sacrifice his chance of ever getting the plot triggers. Uh, well, he can always get a plot trigger with the event if I um, if he hits a mercenary, and happy to see Tyrion get claimed. Mm. Although Fever Dreams should be getting some cards back, right? Yeah, of course. So he he didn't play the at the gates, uh, so that's still in there. And of course, it, it's getting more and more difficult uh, to to play it if you don't uh, open with it. Or some decks play it in round two. There are some decks that play the Maiden Anne at the gates in their plot deck. So we're going to have a Warhammer in the meantime, but it has to. Uh, be traded for a bodyguard at some point. Yeah, but I, I, I'm alright with it now because uh, there's one character that's gonna get intimidated and then I can do another challenge and trade for bodyguard and I don't think he can bring in something that has seven, uh, seven strength with the event. Yeah, maybe we should have done the the power challenge first, actually, and then the intrigue. Okay, so Stannis, I think, can draw here as well. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking here, I was thinking for a second, if I now draw a bodyguard, that's really bad for me, right? <laughs> Because then I have two in hand and I can't trade. Ah, so we have a bodyguard in hand at this point, which means uh, you're yeah, yeah, trying from, to um, bait the mm. the point end play, right? Yeah. Because now the point end on Stannis is incredible. It gets rid of uh, Azor Ahai and either Warhammer or, or bodyguard. Well, wouldn't even need to get rid of uh, the Warhammer. He could just play Morghulis. Air is gone as well now, so... Uh, but if bodyguard is uh, on him, then you can point the end, 
get rid of most of the attachments from play that way as well and uh, you are exposed to uh, Murgulis. Yeah, but I'm happy. If I get point end now. I have another, I think, um, two cost roller attachment. I either decide to bring the other one. But um, yeah, and another bodyguard. So the only problem is that um, there's that's two Warhammers that are um, discarded, then only one left in the deck. And uh, the event brings in. Septon at I think I uh, commented out loud when, when I was watching the game uh, let it bring in something useless like Septon at and not uh, Darion <laughs> Harris <laughs> yeah, there was nothing I, I think Although, that could beat Stannis on the military anyway but yeah yeah I don't think so Now there should be a challenge and it's power. So usually you try to, if you're confident of a comeback, you would do Intrigue, but uh, you can't let uh, the Bara Kohor get too far ahead and finds the Iron Bank, which is another tempo hit that you need to take. Okay, builds up pretty quickly with, this, uh, with mm -hmm. these cards that uh, Lannister has here and the agenda, but um, it is a hit. So you still have to do your slow rounds before you turn it around. And is he going to miss any hollow hill triggers? No. Another Tyrion. Yeah. And now, even though things are okay for you, uh, there's a lot of strength that comes in because Tyrion can bring in a, a mercenary from the discard pile, which could potentially always be something like a Golden Company or a Second Sons. And then the event keeps getting recycled with Wise Master. Mm -hmm. And that still can happen even on Mad King's Command, two extra bodies potentially coming in. Okay, so you have the smith in your plot deck. If it's against the pointy end, it will leave you only with the milk. That could still kneel Casterly Rock in the plot phase before it does anything. In the Martian phase, I mean. You also have supporting the fate that is sometimes played relatively early in the game. Yeah, I'm thinking... Uh, I'm thinking... That supporting the fate is losing initiative if he does play point end. Um, rationing also in this deck. Uh, not that many triggers from winning or losing, but I think Dario Naharis is one, right? That uh, triggers from winning a challenge. But he is not in circulation at the moment, we have not seen him. Yeah, we know what the plot is, he selected pretty quickly, it's going to be the point and no reason to delay it here. It hits the two most important attachments. Oh, okay, so, so <laughs> much for that, I, I was sure uh, when I was watching it live as well, that it was going to be the point end, but he delays it. Does he want to get uh, more from Stannis? Uh, the danger is, of course, that the longer he delays, the more you are likely to get dupes and stuff. So you do play the smith and uh, you go first. Now you have the attachments to kneel uh, everything. So uh, cast the rock first of all, because it has the ability. Gold road will cost him one gold in the challenger's face. And yeah, the hollow heal as well. Not going to work this round. And here come the dupes. Alistair also back. And happy to get um, a card to draw from Alistair and uh, Neil. 
Yeah, it could do with the Dragonstone port or something like that. <laughs> so that's the last Warhammer and it's going for the pointy end for sure. Then the Azor character cannot intimidate. Do you have another Azor High Reborn? In hand? Yes, in hand. I don't think I have a... No, I, I, I have... Um... I think I have the ruler attachments. I have the Red God's Blessing or something like that. Mm, so And I have actually also a hunting accident that I don't want to put on any of these characters, really. Doesn't feel like it's worth it right now. Yeah, so Stan is really going full Voltron now. He has the Lightbringer as well, which means all of them will be going for uh, the pointy end at some point. And I think Seal of the Hand, was it this game that Seal of the Hand was uh, discarded for reserve? Yes. So, um, that uh, also cannot be played to search for another Zora High Reborn. Tyrion is here, and the Iron Bank so set for the long game now, and plenty of dupes. And this time does not carry any gold through to the challenges phase, is there any way to get it? I don't think so. So we're safe from the event this round, right? I think so. Yeah, now currently Stannis has Renown and Intimidate and we have three other lore characters in play, so you can really get at this board. Uh, Milk is still there on Bagging Brothers, so that's one that uh, is basically a useless attachment now because it's never coming off, and uh, if it if Bagging Brother gets taken for claim, it will be lost. The rest is all on Stannis, and all will be gone, so I guess retrading a little bit onto other characters, but there is no Apart from maybe uh, Melisandre that could also use a bodyguard, none of the characters usually in play, like Celisi or Alistair, would necessarily have attachments of their own that uh, need to be put on them. Yeah, and also I think the other bodyguard is still in hand. No, wait, did I marshal the other bodyguard? No, it's still in hand, I think. Well, and taking the dupe from Septonaut. Yeah, Murgulis is still pretty far away. You need to play the whole uh, point end before then. Yeah. And intimidating the one character, of course, that has stealth here. Should be enough to push the Intrigue Challenge as well. And now yeah, but I'm thinking how defend. I put straight the attachments and there's no really good way to do it. Mm, he thinks Sir Davin Lannister. Yeah, so he actually, so that's the one thing he we discovered in, in testing, he is loyal, and this is uh, basically a deck that plays uh, the non-loyal package, it even has the hollow hill, and uh, we played, uh, you played this deck against, uh, I think I uh, we tested when I played uh, James's <laughs> uh, Barafilty deck, and you got a little bit annoyed at uh, a loyal character spoiling things for you, but he is a great character, not a surprise yeah, that they have even... him everywhere. I didn't even notice that he's loyal, so I set up my ghost to high heart and uh, hollow heal, and then I marshaled him and everything got ruined, so... <laughs> okay, putting more on Fever Dreams.
and you are going to walk into that. Yeah, and I also just decided that I'm going to keep the attachments and then remarshal them because I have decent number of them in the deck, uh, in the in the hand, and I don't have any character, so just going for it. I don't want to get uh, anything. Um... The only problem is that Warhammer would go away, but that's kind of unavoidable. Yeah, I think uh, maybe you traded one to many at the beginning, uh, the one that was on Alistair, right? For that yeah. this disputed claim, which didn't really uh, last too long. But you are on 10 power, so Rupert is uh, under pressure to get that renown of Stannis. Well, either that on, or establish a board where uh, he wins all the challenges. Yeah, but now Stannis drew a dupe for Melisandre as well, and there's Bodyguard in hand, and um, I don't know why, but Stannis always draws Melisandre. <laughs> uh, and there's, um, yeah, I think it's all right. I know he's now going for, um, for pointy end, and I'm thinking uh, which blood I should go with. I think Mad King's commands the way to go. Yeah, there are some jumpers, but uh, the problem with Mad King's command, of course, in in Kohor is if you have a really good game and you have all the attachments in play, then um, you can only carry three of them true and uh, if yeah, the but... inevitable point end is played here, then this is a great chance because you should have around three in play anyway. Yeah. Think so. And Alistair is there to do something. He likes to leave play for a Mad King's command. And there we are. Still be an initiative, of course. And now Stannis needs protection from Morgulis. Yeah, but I think then in draw phase I actually drew a dupe for Stannis as well. Yeah. And I, I was trying to play around in testing around this point end, but here I just accepted it because I just wanted to have one really good round that was uh, that was gonna grab some power with the renown and the Zora High. Yeah, to be honest, this is a minor disaster because um, for Rupert, I mean, drawing dupes is actually the best possible thing, even on without thinking of Morgulis, even on Mad King's command, because you can carry three characters through, and yeah, dupes are uh, pretty decent. Yeah, and got extra bodyguard as well. So you do have an attachment that you can trade for another light bringer, but. Uh, no Azor High Reborn, so he's not just going to automatically be in every challenge. He can still do two, though, if he can win them. Mm -hmm. And Kneeling and Tyrion... I think... So I now have another attachment in hand. I think I have a Hunting Excellent in hand that I can put in during marshalling, so I can keep all three and um, in case Mir goes back into the deck. I mean, in case. Uh, he keeps. Um, he keeps. Begging, brother. Well, so plenty of gold now with the Iron Bank if he wants to spend it, but of course he also has to realize that. Uh, only three characters can survive, and Tyrion is nerd, but he kind of has to be kept because there's the the tempo play with uh, bringing another character in from his ability. Mm -hmm. 
Oof, lots of attachments gone already. Still some though that are in there. Second Lightbringer, the most important one in the short term, I guess. Yeah, I think that that's the one thing that's uh, really annoying with uh, Baratheon Kohar is there's no way. I guess you could play Isle of Ravens or something like that to shuffle attachments back, but um, no convenient way. Like uh, in Targaryen, you have those um, marketplaces that you have anyway, and I think with Lannister, you can play. Um, I think in Lannister Alliance, back like, there was. Um, gold mine and uh, the one, yeah, the city um, that the the chapters, yeah. yeah. And in Stark, there is a yeah. Menderley. Yeah, yeah, we're not editing that out, we're keeping it in. So, here actually. Uh, Castery Rock is used on the Wise Master, or Wise Master, I should say. So now you also need to keep him to get the event, to jump in another character, and you get to keep three extra cards, of course. The other way to go possibly here was to maybe. Uh, trigger him because it's just an action, right? It's not challenge action, so he can mm -hmm. get the event before uh, you keep the event in hand as one of the three cards, and you keep a, a different character, something more impactful, I guess. But since he is repeatable, maybe uh, Rupert thinks he is uh, he can stay and uh, do work every round, I guess. Yeah, and um, I was thinking. Before, oh, I can keep all the three, all three attachments, but then I think when I was actually selecting, I was thinking, okay, honestly, um, keeping Begging Brother would be a bit problematic for him because he has to keep Tyrion, now he has to keep Wise Mason, and if he has Begging Brother, then that's not a brilliant situation. So I, I didn't choose Milk so it can go at the bottom as well, and it's back in rotation. And uh, targeting another big power icon. It's actually only the only military icon as well at the moment with Alistair, and this has worked out okay. However, not like you can just uh, close the game like uh, Bara sometimes does on the Mad King's commenter. If if the threats you have, of course, are not answered by Rupert here, you can potentially win the game, you can do two challenges with Stannis, with Renown, you can uh, get the power claim, you can get... Uh, I think Disputed Claim is gone at this point, so can't trade for that. Yeah. But here we go, something needs to come in, and it's uh, Brave Companions, which honestly is not the best, it has one icon and uh, does not trigger ability just from being put into play like this. It has decent strength though. And still to go with left. There's no max on the event, right? So if you had to, you could play both, I guess. You can just bestow with um, with agenda and take it back, or is that that um, limit? Oh, that has limit here. Yeah. Yeah, once Is you it can do it. Is it per round? Per round. Mm. I mean, he is quite useful, to be fair. When he has this uh, repeatable event, I guess, that he's always taking. It's um, it's a bit tricky with the out-of-action condition, so that does not include neutrals. You have to... Um, 
you're playing Lannister here, so out of action means non, uh, not Lannister and not um, neutral, something from a different back faction than Lannister, which uh, is tricky to do, I guess you need to include this in your uh, Banner Dragon package. The other way is to play it in a Targ deck and then you have to have uh, non-Targaryen events that you use with him. It's uh, been used to good effect in some decks and this is a, a good example, I think. So, um, yeah, and he did the have the, yeah. the zero cost event here that gives no attachments that I'm worried about all the time. Yeah, if you put a milk on Tyrion, that could have discarded it. Yeah, but uh, it can also do it next round with Wise Meister because he can also take it back. Mm, if there is a next round, so up to 11 now. This one it looks difficult to defend. So what can? Yeah, I think I know do? what's in this card pile. There's another um, free company, Golden Company, uh, and it can't defend with Wise Master. It's nowhere near as strong as Dennis is. So that's going to draw another card for Stannis' ability. Oh, and here we go. That. There's the hunting accident to be Yeah, traded. but really I just want to trade it. Yeah, for the Lightbringer, right? And yes. Keep uh, Red God's Blessing, which increases his strength. I guess the other way would be to... If there was some slightly better body, like a Darion Harris, you could uh, keep a hunting accident there, and then you trade the Red God's Blessing for the Lightbringer. This actually doesn't work out that that often that uh, you can keep hunting accident in hand for Madkin's command and get an extra card that way. That's uh, pretty much the only mm -hmm. interaction like that in in this particular deck. So nice to have it here. Stanny stands. So the next challenge needs to be defended. Otherwise, he just wins. Needs to be opposed at least. That uh, still fourteen. Yeah, that's 14 and then you can do, you can do then a challenge back. But uh, I guess he's happy to just defend it. <laughs> and really, I was thinking if I should, um, if I should have, uh, when I attacked with Selysi and I had, um, a cohort trigger if I should have traded bodyguard from Stannis and put um, put instead of putting um, hunting accident in I could instead put um, teased on uh, I guess iron bank and I was thinking it should be okay if I play uh, king in the north next round because Tyrion can't trigger and cast the dog doesn't do anything and I guess you can take the event back. And he only had three cards, but of course, um, I mean two cards, but of course he uh, draws for um, Hollow here as well. So one thing, uh, when this um, resolved at the end of challenges, so we see that uh, Brave Companions, uh, Golden Company actually saved Brave Companions from being returned to hand, and uh, they both shared the same timing, and I think... Was this handled correctly on the Iron Throne? You are first player, so you, you could have uh, chosen Golden Company to leave play first, and then... Was it? Have done that, right? Possibly. Could have fucked that up. <laughs> uh, but was it the other, maybe the other Golden Company that saved it? I don't know. Oh, possibly, yeah. I wasn't honestly paying attention to that. I assumed that uh, nothing like that could, could mm -hmm. be relevant. So, um, King in the North to stop uh, Tyrion's ability, to stop Castle Rock, to stop anything annoying, basically. Even uh, the Wise Master cannot uh, find the event again. So, the thinking here was presumably to just win. Stanley has, Stannis has renowned, so any challenge wins the game. Yes, but uh, look at the, how many... Um... How much board came in now? <laughs> yeah, surprisingly big <laughs> board. Yeah. That kind of... Um, 
uh, hurt my plan a bit, but um, all right. Uh, the thing is, next round, um, I can uh, I can always wait because now this round he played at the gate, which means that his last two plots are now reset and he can't play Murgul, he has to play another Mad King's command and um, it's honestly working in my favor, so I'm not too worried about that. A bit, um, a bit frustrating. Nonetheless, I if I just put that seed on um, uh, on Iron Bank and trade at uh, Red God's blessing instead of uh, hunting accident, maybe that would have been worked out better for me. Yeah, basically now also Rupert needs to... So he has the strength, but he needs to use it as well. Uh, he mm -hmm. cannot uh, afford to do much uh, of a counter-attack here. Because any, remember, any challenge that Stannis wins is game over. Yeah, well, I can't stand Stannis either because of... But yeah, that doesn't matter anyway. So the situation on the military is uh, 19 on defense. And Stannis is alone, so power icon is the, is more realistic. Yeah, but also 21 on defense, um, and you have 20, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing you could potentially do is attack with everyone. That means everyone defends. Yeah, I'm currently still, if everyone defends, I'm currently still winning dominance anyway. Yeah, Brave Companions does not have the power icon, so that would stay standing. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. I was thinking if I couldn't get everything to defend, but... Um... I think the the thinking here is if you do military first. Yeah, and then if I do military first, then the uh, two free, uh, golden companies and whatever companions have to kneel. Um, the, then there is uh, eleven for power, and I think I have. I don't know, I was doing this calculation, I have nine. Yeah, the problem is though that uh, there is no power on the faction card, so if Stannis doesn't win the challenge, then he can. He only has to oppose the power challenge. Doesn't yeah, actually I... need to win on defense. I was thinking, of... I wasn't thinking about it, I was just thinking <laughs> that's... Yeah. And now, so he has, he had to spend all of the Iron Bank couldn't use, of course, Caster Rock this round because of the plot. So uh, it's going to take some uh, resources again to recover. Okay, he does have the gate of, Gates of the Moon now, but only one card in hand and reset coming in. And you, of course, benefit now from Gates of the Moon and you have the King's Road as well. And don't really need to marshal anything new because three characters that are duped will uh, do yeah, just and, fine on Madkin's um, command. Now I kind of realize that I actually um, can't get power from winning power, so I just did a fake challenge to see if he... Yeah. And now I just... Um, yeah. Yeah, nothing weird can happen here from losing by five. So we're going to lose the power challenge, win dominance instead. Now there will be power to steal. Yeah. 
Yeah, and this is the problem, right? If the Morgulis window closes basically because of the dupes coming in, there's no two Harris here, and pointy end has been spent on the attachments. Now you are stuck with it, and there is no good opportunity to play it. Even if uh, Lannister had the dupes, or let's say on Tyrion and on Darwin, they're not um, doing too well against what survives on the Baratheon side. Yeah, I'm taking um, rationing just to win, uh, just to win initiative. I think there was Dario and um, something else good at the top. And is anything going to be marshaled? Uh, an Azor High Reborn would be pretty decent. Eh, Kingsgate also, and uh, an Infiltrator is here to provide a Missandra Nil. Just the strongest character this time. <laughs> Flea Bottom, pretty decent but uh, doesn't have the second sons that you like to put into play. Yeah, and you have to keep it then for Mad King's command, but I guess you can get rid of Hollow Hill at this point because it doesn't do anything, and maybe... I'm not sure what, what else you get rid of. I guess you can get rid of Iron Bank, if you're not going to put more gold on it. You can even get rid of Castle Rock, but that's... Yeah. Golden Combat, Tyrion, and Wise Master. And here is... Uh, actually, here Wise Master needs to trigger, right? Yeah, I think so. Because there's two cards in hand, Guess, and yeah, you yeah. can get the third one, and then you, there's no need to keep it. It's getting Morgulist anyway, so you can keep something stronger. Yeah, although I guess you have to now get rid of Davin because you can't afford to have a. What happened here? You can't afford to have um, a nerd character against this Stannis here. Although Stannis' strength is going to go down. To ten after um, after the Lord Chad's leave. Yeah, some pretty easy choices. <laughs> yeah, Wise Master stays along with Tyrion and the Golden Company. I mean, it's not a bad character. 3 for 3. And it has Intrigue Icon that can... Now be defended. Yeah, so unopposed cannot be allowed to happen. So I'm just going to waste one of the characters for this one. And here basically the pressure is kind of off. You don't need to do the calculation to be in a power challenge. You can just do them in sequence. And if magically everything is defended, I mean, what happens on the Morgulis? Then yeah, then Morgulis and whatever. Checking what is still in the deck, if uh, you can do some kind of trade. I mean, you can bring a milk in, there's now one in the deck, right? Mm -hmm. That stops Tyrion's ability. And Septon Ad comes in. It's not really the character you want to see. Uh, so this search is top 10, right? And uh, Rupert 
it hasn't actually had that much luck. Could have drawn a more timely Dario Naharis at some point. Maybe he's seeing Vargo Hout though, who is of course dead. Yeah, that's that's bad enough, I guess. Yeah, and build bone that as well. Yeah, could have been okay to bring him in through shadows this time. Just to get an extra character. And yeah. I, I, I don't trade. Um... No, because no, actually, um, I don't know if you click on the discard pile right now. Um, yeah, we but can't, can't actually... magically show you if I didn't click on it. Yeah. Too. During there the wasn't game. anything, any power icons in the discard pile, so I was alright with just doing a power challenge after the event went through. Yeah, and and uh, 15 uh, basically was in control for the entire game. Yeah, but it felt very stressful and uh, hard to play around everything. And yeah. that I um. In this deck, always has a board, always competes, but just um. The fact that you had yeah. uh, the bodyguard in hand to to always be safe from Morgulis even after the pointy end and then the timely loops uh, never really uh, gave Rupert much of a chance. Yeah, but that um, defense that was um, on the uh, King in the North round was um, yeah pretty good. I, he says that maybe he should have Morgulis earlier, but I'm not sure there was a good window to Morgulis. Maybe just right in the beginning, that would leave me with... What? Was there one time where it would only be Stannis? Uh, not really. I mean, you played air into Stannis and then immediately uh, yeah, bodyguarded I put him. Yeah, bodyguard on him, but then... I think if the next round after air he immediately played Morgulis, then I would have gotten. Um, I would have only kept Stannis, right? Everything yeah, else would have dupes, and then if Selyse dies, it's pretty bad. And I actually I drew the dupes, and maybe that would be problematic for me because I would have that Melisandre and that Selyse in hand, and um, very bad icon at that point. Yeah, so there we are. This actually it was a pivotal game because with this win, the Proud Wing Kings uh, have actually now won the battle for the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, and uh, we still have another game to show you. We actually have already recorded uh, commentary for that. It's my game against uh, Henry and uh, we actually got him to commentate with us again. So we'll be showing you that one next. So hopefully you join us for that and uh, yes I uh, hope you have uh, enjoyed our run and uh, join us for the last video as well bye bye